everybody, it's Romania Black. Um, we're on episode 11 of Link Click, and I'm a bit unsure if this is the last episode of the season or the penultimate episode. <laughs> because the last episode we had, uh, Improvise, episode 10, could have been a penultimate episode. I mean, we had the confrontation in the theater, we had the cliffhanger of Ma holding a gun to Chang. I, I don't know, right? So I'm... I am a bit torn. I, I would like, I'm basically, I'm preparing for the worst, hoping for the best. I am preparing for this to be the final episode of the season. I'm very sad if that's the case, but I'm preparing to be the final episode with this. I am hoping that that is not the case and that we get one more episode. And it'd be amazing if we got 13, but that that is pushing the envelope. That's getting greedy. <laughs> if it were me, I'd have 24 episodes this season. Just go ahead and give us the next season. We're ready. Um, but I don't think that's the case. I think it's either going to be this is the last episode or next week is the last episode. And I, I, I don't know. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to enjoy it. We're going to treat it like it's the last episode because, I mean, we're, we're, we've confronted everybody here, right? Tian Chi is here. Tian Chin is there. Chan is there. Ma is here. Zhao is here. He's tased on the ground. Um, and then Lu and Chang are here. So the gang's all here. Everyone is present. The only one that's not present is Lu Zhao, which I think is the last guy to come. But the friend of Tian Chen, but I don't know if we're going to see him this season or not, or if he's going to be just teased at the very end, and that's going to tie into season three. I, I'm sure that we're going to have a season three. I think that this, we've used the number three so much this season that it's kind of been like the show telling us there's going to be three seasons, right? We got to wrap everything up in the third season, answer all your questions in the third season, talk about Lou in the third season, <laughs> like we're basically, which I like, right? We talked about it last week, the idea of um, and I'm going to talk about it in the comments here, the idea of the past, present, and future. So we might as well just dive into the comments and talk about it. Um, Cherry was telling me that there is a 12-episode uh, audio drama series, which I love that all of the Dong Hua have audio dramas. It's great. I love audio dramas. Um, it is like an OVA, so it's just like little, little side stories with our main trio. I'm assuming it's linked back to season one. The only problem is... There are not English translations. <laughs> the, they were like, oh, you could put like the sub, the closed captions on. And I'm like, ah, I could, but sometimes those are annoying and sometimes they don't translate well or to my liking. I'm picky. So one day I hope that like um, Sweeby and Subs, they're doing the translations for the Heaven Officials Blessing audio drama. So I'm hopeful that at some point maybe a group like that would pick up the OVA audio dramas and translate them into English. But if that doesn't happen, that's fine. It's just cool to know that that exists. I'm like, eh. I'm not really one for fillery things or like non-canon things, which that's why the, the live action makes me excited because it's delving into their past, so it's gonna be treated as canon. But, and some series like Croco's Basketball, all the extra materials tie into the canon, so that's really exciting. But in some series, they don't, and they're just extra, and it's like, it's fine, but it's not really my cup of tea, so that is cool to know about. Anime Annie pointed this out. What I was trying to say is, there is this idea, and I love this idea, that season one was focused on the powers of the past with Lu and Chang setting it up, talking about how their powers allow them to go back in the past with photos and see different things that have happened and that can influence how they solve the mysteries in the present. Love it. Season two is talking about the powers that affect the present. So Tian Chin's powers to possess people affecting the present, Tian Chi's powers to like help him navigate through photos affecting the present and what's going on now. So by that logic, that means if we've talked about season one in the past, season two in the present, then the final season is going to be about the future. And that terrifies me. <laughs> so I'm not ready for that. I was like, oh no, let's not go there. Let's not talk about the future. That's scary. So, but yeah, I absolutely agree. That's what we're doing. I think that's the route that we're going on, which is exciting, but I'm like, okay. Um, Algum Algum had some really good things to point out. I had not realized this, but every time Chan is around Tian Chen, he wears gloves. And if you notice... Tian Chen, to have contact with someone to take control of them, it's not just touching their clothes, it's touching their skin. It's making skin-to-skin -skin contact. So I was like, ah. So Chan wears gloves because he doesn't trust Tian Chen and he doesn't want him to take over him. I'm like, that is, that says a lot of Tian Chen's trust levels that he doesn't trust Tian Chen to not wear gloves around him. That speaks volumes. 
And then that also begs the question, has Tian, has Chan been possessed before? Was he possessed when he first met him? I don't know, right? And that begs the question, right, for a tick. And then what is the significance of Emma? That of Emma with Chan and Ling in the OP. Because Algy Malgum was pointing out in the OP, there's the three people that Chang reaches out to. There's Chan, there's Chao Ling, there's Chan, and there's Emma. So again, we talking about in the past, Emma has related with Chang because Chang possessed her. He went back in the past, saw her story, all of that. In the past, him and Emma had a connection. We've seen in the present, him and Ling have a connection because she and him are like siblings, right? And then, so does that mean Chan and him are going to have a connection in season three in the future? And this is just foreshadowing it? I don't know. I love that Link Click is making us think about these things and theorize it. And then finally, Anime Annie commented uh, on a different episode that was Zhao. Could Lin Zhao have gone overseas after, um, after the conversation with Tian Chen and he's been gone this whole time? So we kind of talked about in the Discord and in the chat the idea of you know, Tian Chen would meet Zhao at this bench over and over again. And they'd constantly, that's, that's where they'd hang out and meet up and talk about things. And the last time they had a conversation was right after the parents died. And Chao was like, oh, well, you'll become a hunter now. And that could have been the last conversation they had. So if that's the case, then is it possible that Zhao went overseas and he's just now coming back? It's like Hamilton, what did I miss? And there's just dead bodies everywhere. <laughs> That could be the case. We don't know. And then it is interesting that Tianji, she heard all the rumors about her mom, right? We kind of established that from her perspective, she was hearing all the rumors about her mom, which in turn means that Tian Chen was hearing them too, right? It's just, you know, it kind of brings up the point of kids. Kids realize more than you think they do and they listen and comprehend more than you think they do. And this was a prime example of it. And then Tianxi running at the same place when her and Chang crossed paths in episode nine, it was that she was running back to the crane games. He was running forward. They were at different times because I didn't put two and two together that Tianxi, she was two days prior, right? Two days prior, she ran across that same location. So that's all fun stuff, right? Just a bunch of fun stuff. So <laughs> I'm really excited for this episode though. You all are too. I want to give a real quick shout out over to our philanthropy tier over on Patreon to thank them so much for all they do to support me and my reactions to Donghua anime, uh, manga, and Don Mai. So a special shout out to our philanthropy tier members who get a shout out uh, each week in my videos to Tyrone Tyrone, to Anime Annie, to Eric, to Sunspots, to Translucent Men, to Goob, to Anna, to Legatus, to Matthew Palfinier, as well as Argent, as well as Ashy Got Snow Bitches, as well as Nameless Monster, Shimoyama, Kiri, Be Happy, Alex Cornejo, Dana, and Edgar. Thank you all so, so much for all of your support. I definitely appreciate it, and I'm very, very grateful. All of my love. Ah, so yes, I, I poured myself some coffee this morning. I was like, I'm ready to see either the penultimate or final episode of Link Click season two. It seems like it's it's gone by quickly, but there's also been so much happening that it doesn't feel like it's gone by quickly. And the thing about it is, it's so funny. We thought we were going to find out all this stuff about Lou this season. He's, we're like, oh, Lou's going to be incapacitated. We're going to find out all the things about him. God, no. <laughs> We haven't found out a damn thing, which is, you know, I think speaks volume for the series. It's been so entertaining and we've been theorizing so much, but none of it has had to do with Lou. So again, season three about the future. What do we do with that? So I'm excited, y'all. I hope you all are as well, but it is time. I'm bracing myself, preparing for this to be the final episode, but also preparing for it to be the penultimate. So We'll just have to wait and see, won't we? But I want to check, make sure my subtitles are on. They were not. And we are going to start Link Click episode 11 of season two here in three, two, one. And let's uh, do this. That's how you do a penultimate episode. <laughs> 
shit. Okay, I'm not bringing out Whiteboard Coon because we're going to talk through the episode, and I, I think I want to keep myself on track. But this episode was really coherent. This episode was really freaking good. It was very coherent. Things were explained. The funny thing is, things were explained that have only been brought up theorized wise for this season nothing else overarching has been explained but that's fine because um this is not the last episode i went on discord just to really quickly scroll through and see and everything was black box which i appreciate and so i just clicked on the episode 11 black boxes and then somebody put episode 12 preview black box i didn't click on it obviously but the fact that it's there i'm like okay so there's an episode 12. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to guess that anyway, because this doesn't feel like the last episode. It feels like, oh, we need one more episode to round out whatever the hell's happening. But basically, long story short, everyone's trying to kill everyone. <laughs> and it's all messed up. So yeah, oh my god. So we need to, we need to go through this. Maybe not bringing my board coon out was a mistake, but we'll go through this bit by bit. But I, this episode was even better than the last. The last was like a little mini penultimate episode. And this was the penultimate episode. I, Lu Guang is very smart. Very perceptive. Very smart. Figures things out very quickly. Or does he? Or has he always known that this is kind of leading to this point? And what's curious is we don't know for sure if Lu Guang has any powers that relate to the future. We've theorized that if he can look 12 hours into the past, can he look 12 hours into the future? We theorized that, um, but we don't know for sure. And so is it possible that Lu has looked into the future but just seen bits and pieces? And so he's just trying to like figure out like where things are all connecting at? Or is he like Sherlock and he's just used context clues? I mean, I'm fine with that too, if he's just been using clues that he saw. And now when you look back at that episode, I think it was episode eight where he's like looking around, it all makes sense now because he was trying to figure out, okay, is there any clues to show me where I'm at? And that's really smart. So that ending, I was not ready I was really not predicting her to get shot, which we'll talk about, but oh my God. And I did want to bring up something Anime Annie said when we get to that point. Most of the comments were things I was going to talk about anyway, but there was something Anime Annie pointed out that I was like, oh, I didn't think about it that way, but we'll get to it. So in true link click fashion, one thing I do like is that they backtrack to us and show us exactly the, the means like behind the hat trick, the means behind the magic trick. How were we figuring out how things went down? And so we got to see with Zhao and Chang and Chao Ling and Tianxi, we got to see, oh, okay, here is how they figured out what they were going to do to get away from Tianqin once he went to the trap door. So no wonder Chang had the smirk on his face. He's like, oh, we, we practiced this, Lou. We prepped for it. You'd be so proud of us. We, we dotted our I's and crossed our T's. We were so ready. And then Chan and Tianqin also had a backup plan as well. So that was, it was really cool to see them like put the plan into action. And Tianqi, Tianqi just wants to go see her brother. She just wants to go find her brother. And we're going to talk about the two. Um, there are some things pointed out in the Discord that I want to talk about it with it. But I love their use of the illustrations to just illustrate what's going on. And then, man, that little that little drawing of them, like, clapping hands, Lu and Chang. Can we get that next episode? <laughs> Can we get that, please? I just want them to be safe. And I don't know. Here's my fear. My fear is both the kids and Chan and Ma are going to die. That's my fear is that all four of them are going to die. And then in the midst of all these corpses are going to be our trio. And Zhao's going to be like, what the hell happened? You know, my fear is that both the kids are going to die and that Chan is either going to die or get away. And they're going to go after Chan for season three. That's what I'm predicting, but I don't know. I don't know. The fact that, that Liu Zhao has not showed up yet and we got one more episode. I feel like Liu Zhao could be the way that Chan gets out of this situation. He's like the, the deus ex machina. That would be very Shakespearean in Shakespeare. And in drama, there's a term called a deus ex machina. And it's basically in ancient Greek plays, you would have a situation where the hero would be in trouble or they'd have the villain cornered and some kind of entity, usually it was a Greek god, would come down and swoop them out of the problem and they'd ride away. Like Apollo would come down in his chariot, swoop up the, the hero and, and help them escape from the situation. So that's the situation at hand, right? So the question is, um, 
I think that Zhao, Lu Zhao, is going to be our deus ex machina. I think he's going to come next episode. The question is going to be, is he going to help Chan or is he going to help uh, Tian Chen and Chang? Is he going to help, to help Tian Chen or is he going to help Chang and Lu in them? That's going to be the question. I feel he's going to come in with that cowboy hat and do something. It's going to be like Back to the Future. It could be like Back to the Future Part 3, right? And then the question is going to be, well, then what? Who's he going to help? How is this series going to end? You know they're going to end on something crazy. You know they're going to. But but what do we do? And Lou, like Tian Chen, exacerbated his wound again. So it's like, why? what are y'all doing? And I feel like that's so darkly poetic that you had Tian Chen. Tian Chi was threatening Chang being like, I have the person you care about most. Your most, your most intimate best friend. And I was like, intimate best friend. That's a way to put it. <laughs> a way to describe him sure he's like i have your most precious best friend here and he you know injures him and hurts him and then what happens it's like karma his sister gets shot but it wasn't by chang or or a Zhao Ling. i'm sure it's i bet it was by either the question is you know it's like dallas who shot so and so i think sean shot the girl Taught shot tian chi but we'll, we haven't gotten there yet we need to build ourselves back up to that point right and Zhao's like, could this work? And he's like, Captain, it did work. Look, we're here. And meanwhile, we have Chan talking about magic shows. We'll bring them here. And Tian Chen's like, I've dealt with him several times. Just like in the photo shop from season one, he's probably got a plan to escape using his ability. So the idea of putting the tracker on him is, the idea of putting the tracker on him is so genius because it calls back to the police department putting the tracker on Chang to begin with, and they just imitated it this time around. And then turning off the metal detectors, like seeing how both sides were so prepared for what was about to go down was a really cool way to start out the episode. Chan's eyes though, his eyes glowing yellow and looking like a cat's eyes. They look feral. Like he just looked feral here saying, sometimes if one relies too much on their ability, they'll lower their guard. Which again, it comes back in this episode, right? Wherever he runs, as long as we can locate him, we can track his costume and find him. And then we had Ma, and Ma discovered where he is. As as Lu Guang is saved, we'll have this explosion accident. Chan is just like a damn Shakespearean villain. He really is a Shakespearean villain. And what I mean by that is a lot of villains in Shakespeare plays, and I just target out Shakespeare because I'm a Western viewer, so I can relate to Shakespeare. I'm sure there are Chinese equivalents. But for me... What makes him such an interesting villain, Sean, is that he has this tragic backstory. And the problem is, the tragic backstory is by his own design. He's responsible for his own tragic backstory. And it's like, damn, that all coming out in the works that, yeah, I was like, I didn't think she was cheating on him, but I thought it was all in his head. And we get final confirmation this episode. I'm like, the vindication feels good. It wasn't him. It was him. It wasn't her. She was never disloyal to him. He made this mess himself. And he's a killer and a murderer. And the idea that as a murderer, and we'll talk about what Tian Chen and Chan have kept from each other information wise, but the idea that Tian, that Chan, he thought that he would just go back. And the thing that gets me is he wanted to use Chang to go back and keep her from cheating. I'm like, that one incident, if you think she is, you know, not loyal to you and she's having infidelity, then her not flirting with this one guy isn't going to solve the problem. Like, you're the problem. <laughs> That's what it ends up being. It's like, Chan, you're the problem. You are making this such a big deal and you're making things out in a way that they weren't even like that to begin with. Like, you are the one who's jealous for no reason. And it's just like, oh my God. Like, basically find out that Chan is a serial killer and... It's all by his own design and he's delusional and doesn't realize that he's like this, which tracks because a lot of murderers and a lot of serial killers, they don't think they've done anything wrong. They're like, they're like, I'm the victim. And it's like, no, you're not the victim. It's just, oh my God. It's just all coming out in the wash this episode. Genius. So yeah, so we have the explosion and then we have the intro. I still don't feel comfortable about Chang and Lu in this. I, there's a part of me that we, we know we have that image of Chang and Lou's arms. I'm like, was it in a dark location like a damn subway? I don't know. And I, my fear is 
that Chang is going to get shot too, Chan's going to be like, well, if none of you all will help me, I'll just kill all of you. And then he's going to, you know, shoot Chang. That's my fear. Um, but we'll talk about that here towards the end. Um, so yeah, the, the OP does not give me good vibes. It does not make me feel warm and fuzzy in any slightest. So this episode is called Confrontation. And I just can't believe we get everybody here. And the thing about it is, Tian Chen did not expect his sister to be here. So that tells us they did not want her back. Chan thought that Tian Chen wanted her back, but that wasn't the case. And um, one thing that was pointed out in the Discord, I can't remember if it was Anime Annie or Tony Simi or SQQLBH, uh, whoever pointed it out. Someone was pointing out the idea that it is very possible that Tian Chen, we now know that Tian Chen gave the photo to Lu, right? To try to go back and change things. So it's, it's weird. It's this weird situation where Tian Chen had the photo, gave it to Lu, which is a flag for us that he's not entirely with Chan. Both Chan and Tian Chen, Tian Chen says it himself, they were just using each other for their own means, right? Tian Chen wanted to learn how to weaponize his power. Chan showed him how to do that. The thing is, Chan, in true Shakespearean villain fashion, thought that Tian Chen was loyal to him and would help him change the past. And the reality is Tian Chen didn't care about Chan's past. He wanted to change his own. So it almost seems like that moment that he gave Lou the photograph thinking, okay, you'll go back and possibly change the future without having us having to go through all of this, right? Without having us to do all of this, right? And so I think that's interesting. And Anime Annie or whoever in the Discord was pointing this out before I got on here to do the discussion, that it's very possible that when Tian Chi ran away, Tian Chen ran after her, but then was like, I'm going to let her go because that way she's not in danger because Chan is a freaking psychopath. <laughs> and he's like, I'm going to go try to take care of things on my own, but work with Chan as well. And we both might be able to get our end goal while keeping my sister safe. Because yeah, the idea of Chan Chi, she's not mentally stable. She's not in a good place. The idea of her being here is very dangerous for her and he loves his sister. So of course he doesn't want her getting hurt. It all makes sense now. The big question I still have about Tian Chen, which we have one more episode presumably left. Um, the big question that I have is when he was back in season one, talking to Chang and trying to get to know him, he kept referring to him as the friend. I want to get to know my friend. And we could take it as he wanted to get to know him to possibly go back and change the past. That's very well likely. That's probably the case. But there is the idea of, well, was he looking for Lu Zhao? Do you think Lu Zhao possibly had the same powers Chang does? Is, you know, what do we do with that? So I don't know. I don't know what we do with that. So that's, I'm going to be curious next episode. If, if Liu Zhao shows up, what do we do with that? And Sean's like, well, it's a family reunion, except he's like, I don't have a family. So I guess I'm the one left out. And he keeps saying, I detest betrayal the most. Yeah, Chan has major trust issues, if that wasn't apparent already, and the idea of anybody betraying him is terrifying. And I, that's why I think either one of two people shot Tian Chi. Either Chan shot her, he got rid of Ma, came back and shot her, or it's going to be Lu Zhao next episode that shot her, and he shows up and is like, mm, yeah, no. And then he ends up helping uh, Chan. I think it's either Zhao, Lu Zhao, or it is Chan that shot her. I think what, we might as well talk about it while I'm thinking about it. What Anime Annie pointed out was that they were like, do you think that the confrontation between Ma and Chan seems staged? At first, I didn't. At first, I didn't think it seemed staged because, like, Ma gets shot in the shoulder. Like, he could have bled out there. I mean, he gets shot in the shoulder, so it's not a non-vital, but he could have bled out. Um... At first, I thought, no, Chan is just really pissed off. And Ma just revealed that Chan was betraying, essentially, Chan Chin the whole time, pointing out how much of a hypocrite he was. So at first, I thought, no, Chan's just having a reaction, and he's pissed, and that's just how it ended up being. And then Ma went after him, and then he shoots him, and he's like, oh. But then, the more I think about it, I think it could go either way. I think either it was real... And Ma was, like, mad at Chan again and tried to shoot after him and then was like, oh, well, shit, you're not falling, so you have a bulletproof vest on. And then they chase after him, right? Or 
it could be it could have been staged and Ma knew about the bulletproof vest to begin with and lured Chon away and then Chon came back. The only problem I have with that it was staged theory, the only problem I have with that is why? Why go to all that trouble? Chon had the advantage. He had the gun pointed at all of them. So there really is no reason for Ma and him to put on this big production and leave the scene not knowing how it would turn out, which would possibly let Tian Chin and Tian Chi and all them get away. Why would he leave and then come back five minutes later? That doesn't make sense to me. So I'm my gut is telling me that it was Chon ran off being like, I don't have the gun. I'm in a place of a disadvantage. I'm going to leave. Bye. And then Ma went after him. My theory is that Ma went after him because it's Ma. And then Sean hid in the shadows or turned a corner, jumped Ma, took the gun, knocked him out, and then came back in the shadows to shoot Tian Chi because Sean is pissed at this point because he doesn't think that Tian Chen and Tian Chi are going to help him. Chang has already proven he's not going to help him because he's like, this lady didn't cheat on you. I'm not going back in the past. And Tian Chen's like, we're not helping you because we don't care about you. And so now Chan is just pissed and going to try to kill everybody. That's my theory. That's my theory, but I don't know. And I'm worried because we don't know how many shots Chan has left. The fact that he has, I mean, him, Chan shooting Chan Chi makes sense because he doesn't need her. If he has a, if he has Chang, he just has the photo of his wife. He can use Chang and Tian Chin to go back in the past and change, you know, the course of fate right? He can do that. He doesn't need Tian Chi to do that. So him shooting her is nothing off of him. But what he can do with that is if he shoots her, then he can say, well, now you don't have a choice. If you want to save your sister, you've got to go back in the past and change things. Or I'm going to shoot her again. He's like, I'll help you save her, but you've got to go back in the past and help me first. And that will give Tian Chin motivation to take Chang over and use the power to go back to change whatever happened. That's what it is. It's just using Tian Chi and shooting her as leverage. But he shot her like point blank in the chest. I don't think she's coming out of this. So then there's the question of, would Chang go back and change the past to keep her from dying? Is that even a possibility? Because they'd have to take a photo of her and then go back in the past and change it. Can they do that? I mean, I feel like they'd have to take care of Chan first before they went back in the past and did that. But... Can they do that before she dies? Is there a stipulation with that? I don't quite recall how that works. Uh, and then if we change the past, is it going to change the future? What, what are we, are we going to, are we going to have a butterfly effect? I don't know. I feel like the whole point of the story is not to change the past and because it altered, it could destroy the future. So my personal belief is with this next episode, my personal belief is that Chan is going to try to use shooting Tian Chi as leverage to get Tian Chen to take Chang over to go back and change the past. I don't think it's going to work. And I think that in supreme Shakespearean tragedy fashion, Chan and the twins are going to die, possibly Ma as well. And then I feel like the three of them are going to be left. And then Chow, Lu Zhao is going to show up at the very end to cause this big cliffhanger. That's what I'm predicting. That is my prediction. Put it in writing now. I think that's what's going to happen. I don't think the twins are living, but which is sad and we'll talk about it, but that's, that's my prediction at this point, right? That's where I'm at. And so then, yeah. And then Chang is like, you came into Lu Guang's ward to give him the photo. And Ma's like, you gave him the photo. So Ma and Chan did not know about the photo being given to Lu. That's important. And then he thought, and then Tian Chen asked for the phone without saying anything. And Ma's like, oh yeah, you get the phone. You even picked up a blind spot in the surveillance so that they wouldn't know that you got it. And then Sean's like, wait, you've had the phone this entire time? So Anime Annie pointed this out too. Why do they want Lumen's phone? What is on Lumen's phone that is so important? Because the moment he finds out about it and he's like, wait, what is going on? He's like, excuse me? He's like, why do you have the phone? Why didn't you give it back? You've got the phone. What's going on? And Tian Chin's like, are you doubting me? And he's like, if it's not you, then it's her. And she's like, I don't have a phone. So Tian Chin does have the phone. 
And Chang is like, well, your sister wouldn't lie, so why are you hiding this? And what is he planning to do with the phone? We don't know. He's like, I thought about changing the past. He's like, that's why I gave you the photograph to try to change it without Sean finding out. And Sean is like just pissed at this point because it's like he didn't know about this part of the plan, right? And then Ma, whether it's planned or whether he's just dumb, I, I think it's the latter. He's like, I already told you about the phone. Didn't you ask him for it? He's like, oh, you already knew about it. I don't think this was staged. I think Ma's an idiot. And Ma was just like, oh, boss. Oh, boss, you knew about the phone already. Why didn't you ask him about it? And, Ch and Sean's like, son of a bitch. What are you doing? Like, Sean just has a lot of loyalty and trust issues, right? And then pointing the gun. And Sean Shin's like, just keep, you just played ignorant to keep using me. And he's like, this isn't about trust. He's like, I didn't trust you, but I didn't betray you either. And of course, Chan is like, well, that's not how this works, right? And then he goes into that spiel about how he raised them like his children. And Chang's like, like hell you raised them like your children. He's like, that sounds all nice and dandy, but you just used them as tools. You didn't actually raise them or do anything. And then, man, I don't know, Chan's face saying it's not my fault. I don't need any substitutes. That is just like Chan, like the evil of him coming out in this episode and the way they draw him where it's just like the black around his eyes where he's like, I don't need a substitute family. I didn't need to do any of this. And it's like, whoa, dude, like Chan goes off the rails real quick, right? And he's like, I just need you to go back and change the past. And Tian Chen's just like, yeah, about that. He's like, she's the mistake that needs to be fixed. I just, the way he says that in his eyes, he just looks like a damn murderer. And that's the thing. Like he looks so deranged in that moment. Right. And the thing about it is, is that he's so delusional and has like, is not able to cope with the knowledge that it's his fault. All this happened. And a lot of people are saying, well, back when he was on the police force, he seemed like such a good guy and he was so loyal and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, a lot of serial killers seem normal too. <laughs> I'm like, I've seen some true crime documentaries. A lot of those serial killers, everybody was like, well, he was just a nice guy. And I'm like, and he had people in his basement. You know, I, a lot of people just believe that it's fine. They're just a decent person. And it's like, no, they're terrifying and they're hiding it very well. Or they just haven't snapped yet, right? Under the right conditions. But Sean has snapped. He has snapped for sure. There is no doubt at this point that he has, he has gone cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Meanwhile, uh, Zhao, Zhao Li wakes up and he's like, damn it, my phone is missing. Now, the fact that his phone is missing is like the fact that it's not there, I do think is something we should keep in mind because the fact that somebody's taken his phone, we know Wang is out of the picture. We know now that Lu and Zhao Ling were in the building getting the cop. We know at this point that Ma had taken Chang and Tian Chi out so who would have taken his phone? Now, either, I, but yeah, there's no way that, that Tian Shi or Chang could have had time to take his phone without Ma noticing. They had him at gunpoint. So again, my theory is that, that Lu Zhao is going to show up next episode and he took Zhao Li's phone to find some means of getting to where they are, right? I don't know how, I don't know why does Lu Zhao have a power I don't know, but I feel like he's the one that took the phone. Maybe we'll find out it was somebody else. I don't know, but in any case, we see them come on. And Lou instantly is like, where's Chang? Like, Lou is like, I got to find Chang. Again, we don't know exactly if Lou has gone back into the past to save Chang, and this is part of the timeline that Lou knows is inevitable. And so maybe that's, maybe Lou already knew that he was in the subway, but he's looking around in the location where he's being held to figure out if it's close to the subway so we could just say that Lou pulled a Sherlock and figured out where they are. But he looks so concerned. He's like, we got to go find him. And then they're like, well, we'll just split up. Again, Ling and Lou go, I'm glad that Ling and Lou went together. I'm glad that was the case because I was worried that they would split up and it would be bad. And then Tian Shin's like, she didn't betray you and that man was innocent. 
I love the idea that Sean and Tianchen have been keeping information from each other the entire time. That Tianchen was just using Sean to try to help his sister and them get back to their previous life. Which makes sense. They were kids. They had no means. They needed somebody with connections to the police. Somebody with connections to everything else to get this far, right? And Sean was... It's interesting that Sean thinks he's been in control of this entire situation. And then in this episode, we find out that Tian Chen actually had a lot of control over him. But now at the very end, Sean is taking that control back. The question is, did Sean hire them for the Emma case? That's the big question, right? We still don't know the answer to that. I feel I'm going to bring out Anime Annie's questions on Whiteboard Coon next episode and go through them all. And we'll just try to see what we can make with that. But... But yeah, he's like, I saw it and I heard it. How can you allege they were innocent? And Tianchen's like, he's the first person you asked me to kill. And just like using Tianchi's power, he's like, how could I misremember? And he's like, don't forget, when I controlled him, I could access his memories. Using Tian Chi, yeah. So using Tian Chi, going back, going to the photo and going and controlling him, he could access the memories, right? So there is a, so he was able to see what it was. And his apartment looks really great. Like you look at his apartment, he's just sitting there reading. It looks all nice and clean and everything. He's just reading the play and everything when he's being possessed. And it shows back there. I honestly think that he was possibly gay because it shows him like they're sitting there eating together having dinner and there's this other guy randomly here I'm like what was Dao was Da actually gay and had like you know his lover there too and they were all just friends that's what I'm thinking I'm thinking that Da was like not even he was in a relationship with this guy that's sitting there eating the ramen with them and they're just all hanging out together I think that was it. Him and her just had like this platonic relationship as actors. And then Sean took it wrong. Sean, he went to the wrong conclusion. And she kind of gives subtle little hints throughout this episode. I like that they put in the, the idea that people aren't going to see the theater anymore because of video games and stuff and TV. They're not going out and supporting the arts and seeing the plays. It's a nice little jab of being like, hey, young kids, go out to your local theater and see something so that these people won't die. <laughs> But I like that, and she talks about the subway noises there, which is how what Lou picks up on all of that. So it's, it could be that, you know, they just have the situation. Now her eyes are so vivid there, right? They're kind of like a bright brown too. Interesting. I know I'm not saying she's possessed here, but her eyes are so vivid. And we don't see that in the flashback because, because it's all in black and white. But her eyes are like a light color too, kind of like Chang's. What do we do with that? He's like, the night after next. He's like, at night? He's like, why? I have an appointment. You can go by yourself. We're not the boss. You don't have to worry about it. And she says, there's a venue designed for office use, but the area is inadequate. So he's like, it's kind of secretive. He says, my husband is opposed to me coming home late. Maybe it's just his job getting to him or is it excessive concern? No, it's the fact that he's jealous and she, he thinks she's cheating on him by coming home late, right? Because that's the telltale sign, right? The, iro the ironic and hilarious thing is she wasn't cheating on him. She was legit just practicing her lines with this guy and she didn't want him to worry. But there are some like little tiny signs that she's like, you could tell whether or not he was actually abusive to her or was kind of like the, over the overbearing boyfriend. There's just those little signs. Right, that just the way she, her at her her mannerisms, her nonverbals, the way she like crosses her arm, like she's worried about it, and then the fact that when she visits the venue on the phone, she lies and says, "Oh, I'm not by myself," because she doesn't want him to worry. But then she says the wrong thing, and is like, "Oh, not with my stage partner," not knowing that he has an extreme fit of jealousy and thinks that they're like having an affair. I did think for a second, and I didn't say this in the reaction. I did think for a hot second that the art curator or the guy that owned the space that they were thinking about renting, I thought for a second he was going to assault her and the baby was his. I don't know. I don't know. But I thought that for a hot second and then I'm glad it didn't go that route. I was like, oh, thank God we didn't go that route with this. But I also thought that Chon was going to like strip his shirt off and show us his, his bare abs, but he is no longer allowed for fan service because he's evil. <laughs> 
Shakespearean villains are no longer allowed for fan service. Also going to point out real quick, just looking at the scene where he's unbuttoning his shirt on the phone, there's a little bush next to it and it has like little reflective uh, highlighted flower bits. They're blue and yellow, like Chong and Lu. I'm just saying, just pointing it out there. And he's like, it's so late. And she's like, on your own. And he's like, who's Da Shuai? And she's like, oh, that's just my, my partner in the last play. And he gets really, he gets super jealous. And then he has this fantasy that they're going out and having these romantic dinners and meals and like having wine together and like all the flowers. And he's like wooing her and like making out with her. And Sean has all these fantasies that are not true. And he's like, how could they? How could they be innocent? I'm not wrong. Based on my experience, I won't make mistakes in my investigation. But here's the thing. There's the thing. He goes on that spiel about how he's such a good detective and he can't make any mistakes in his investigation, but he never had solid proof, solid evidence that she was cheating on him. He was going by assumptions. And that means that speech earlier when he's saying, we can't rely upon assumptions for an investigation. We need evidence. It's almost like he's projecting his own insecurity about the decisions he made based on his emotions and is thinking, what if I was wrong? What if she didn't cheat on me and I killed this woman and this man in cold blood when they did nothing wrong? And so that's why he like doubles down on, oh, you need evidence to prove a case. You need evidence. You need evidence. You can't go by assumptions. And now we find out that he went by assumptions and made the biggest mistake. And now he's trying to deny himself and saying he's not wrong and he's not a victim. I... Mm. And then, yeah, they made him hang himself. They deserved to die. And then she's like, what are you talking about? And at that point, he was had the knife and was going to stab her. And she's like, oh, hey. And then we find out that she was like, oh, hey, you're here. And he's like, then what about your child? And he's like, shut up. Don't mention this word. You're not qualified to say this word, you monster. All of you are damned monsters. I'm like, so basically, yeah, it's the idea that he tried to make the child. He's like, he tried that. That's it. That's why he cracked. He realized he, he murdered her and then found out she was pregnant and he twisted the entire thing as justification being like, well, she not only was cheating on me, she was pregnant with that man's child. Isn't that insane? And like freaking delusional. And then Tian Chin's like, your wife was pregnant with your child. You killed them both. So it's like this thing that when we first met Chong, we thought it was this tragic story. Then we found out that she could have been cheating on him and he could have been justified somewhat. And now we're learning, no, it's tragic and horrible, but it's tragic for him because he basically, it's manifest destiny. He made his own fate. He killed his own child and his wife thinking that she had cheated on him when that wasn't the case. And it's all his fault. And now he's just like, he can't deal with the guilt and it's made him snap. It's bizarre. It's insane. Now, Ma tackling him. Yeah, I don't think this is staged. Going back to this, I think that this was legit. I think that he tackled him and, like, tased him. But he's got the bulletproof vest on. And maybe that, maybe the point where he tased him and it didn't affect him was when Ma realized he had the bulletproof vest on. Okay. And he goes for the gun, right? And he goes for the gun. And it's like, you stay back. And now I'm pointing it at him. And he aimed for his head. Now, Ma aimed for his head. I don't think that was staged. I think he aimed for his head and Ma's just a bad shot. And he missed. And Chang's like, and Sean's like, really? And then he shoots him, but he shoots him in the chest with a bulletproof vest. And then Lou and Ling are like, okay. Maybe they weren't together, but then they ended up together. And so he's like, you asshole, you get a bulletproof vest, but put me in the line of fire. That actually is really funny because Ma's like, wait a minute. You mean you've, I've been like putting myself in danger when you had a bulletproof vest on the entire time. Yeah. And you can see when he puts his hand out, there's no blood. So that means that that was the bulletproof vest. All makes sense now. Yeah. And he's like, I'm going to kill you today. And he shoots him. There can't be that many shots left, right? Cause that's been how many shots have been fired. At least four. 
Ma just fired four shots, right? He just fired four shots. He got the one on the face, the one on the bulletproof vest. He just fired twice again. We know there's a fifth shot, which was, um, which was Ma getting shot there, right? And then how many times does he fire after that? He fires one. Okay, he fires six times. He fired six. There were six fires out of that gun. So I'm going to say a magazine for a semi. Okay. I want to see for how many rounds are in a pistol. Um, Ten. What is it? How many rounds are in? Uh, I want to see how many shots are in, in that. Um, shots in pistol. Because it's a semi-automatic pistol, isn't it? Yeah. Um, how many are usually in it? It says, well, there's one shot. Um, most nine millimeter pistols have a magazine of around 15 rounds. Okay. So, well, that's no good. <laughs> that's no good. Cause if it has 15, mm, it could have 15. Yeah. It could have 10 to 15 rounds in it. Well, damn it. That's not good. I was like, well, cause I was thinking they, they fired off seven shots so far. The problem is there's at least three shots left Two if you count Tian Chi being shot. So oh, that's not good. Uh, no. Okay. Not good. He's like, and then Sean just runs away. Sean ran into the shadows because he wanted to just lure Ma away or get to where he could get to a safe spot and then come back and attack. What I love about the fight scene, what I love about the fight scene is that it felt like all of the different fight scenes this season were leading up to this one. It was like all the choreography where we've seen Chang demonstrate his fighting ability and on him and Liu's body doing the same. It's all led up to Tian Chen and Chang facing each other, which is from last season. We had the friend, the red eyes, meeting Chang, and now we see them go fist to fist together. And he's like, do you still want to help him? And, Ch and Tian Chi is like, I just want you to not fight. And then Chang's like, well, if you're the one who gave Lu Guang the photo, it means you want our help. And he's like, you're in no position. I did seek your help but you ignored our cries like all the others. There's no change in the past. And I don't think that's fair to say. I feel like Chang, Chang did try to go back, but there wasn't any, you can't change the past. I think that's the problem is that Lu needs to be there to tell Qian Chen, you can't change the past, no matter how much you want to. And the problem is I feel bad for Qian Chen and Qian Chi in this moment because he's like, our lives are still hell. And that's kind of just, that's the cycle of violence, right? Like it felt like maybe Tian Chen thought if I kill these people, it'll make things better and it'll get to where my sister and I can be safe, but nothing changed. You just murdered these people who were innocent or, or otherwise they didn't really deserve to die and nothing changed and you're still in hell rather than moving forward. And, and I feel like Chang is the perfect person to talk to them because He's like, look, I don't have my parents either, but you, you got to move forward, right? You have each other, right? I feel like Chang needs to say, you know, you have each other. I didn't have anybody until Ling showed up and then Lou. But I don't know if we're going to have time for that next episode. I really don't. I, I'm a little worried that there's not going to be that discussion. My fear is that the discussion of how Tian Shen and Tian Chi, if they had just done like what Chang did and focus on the people around you and just let the past be the past, then their life could have been better. I feel like that discussion, if it happens, is going to happen after the fact, after either both of them are dead or next season, right? So I don't, but it's so tragic, right? It's really tragic. And then we go back to the flashback and seeing like just the gradient, the red, blue, and yellow gradient on the photos. It almost feels like a 3D thing, right? And then Tian Chin getting mad. I don't have a future. Mm. And it's like, yeah, because he's helped kill all these people, even if they get out of this mess with Chan, he's going to get arrested because he's been an accomplice in all these murders. So yeah, unfortunately, there is this idea that because of their past actions, it's ruined his future. And the sad thing about it is it didn't have to be that way for Chan or for him. It didn't have to be that way. He didn't have to kill either of those people. 
and his life, if Chon hadn't killed his wife and her lover or her wife and her play partner, then their life could have been so much fun, so much better and fine. It also makes sense now why Chon had no problem killing Chin Bin because he saw their fan, his family and was like, well, how dare you have what I couldn't have? You know, it, it goes back to that. So it's just really tragic. Like this whole season's been this big Shakespearean tragedy and Tian Chi is just like trying to be like, please don't hurt each other. I do like when Chan Chin, like he braces himself on the tracks to keep himself from falling over. That was a really good move. I liked that. And he tries to like, it just, it feels like the confrontation between Tian Chin and Chang has been built up over these last two seasons. And we're finally getting the two of them. And then right when he thinks he has Chang cornered, that's when Lu comes in like a damn white knight. <laughs> Like a knight in shining armor. And I'm sorry, but, you know, you had you had Lou, you had Chang and Lou's body leaping above Chang to save him off the boat. Now you have Lou, like, jumping in and Lou actually demonstrating that he can fight. So what does that mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Because he does come in and kick him. And he's like, nope. So he does manage to knock him over, right? And he gets tased, which sucks, right? And Ling, yeah, he gets tased in the hand, which, ugh, that sucks. At least it wasn't in his chest. And then he presses on that wound. He's like, leave me. He's like, is he your most important friend? Yes. <laughs> and he's like, don't you want to save him? If I kill him now, what will you do? If you kill him now, he's probably not going to help you. And then poor Lou. Lou's like, this damn wound of mine has been, like, hit on this whole season. Not good. He's like, kill me now. Or go back and change the past. That's, or go back to the past and change everything. And him laughing. That's why I think he's going to die next episode. Because it seems like Tian Chin at this point doesn't see the point in living. He's like, if we can't change the past and make my sister and I happy again, then just kill me now. Because at this point he realizes if they get out of this, he's going to get arrested. And he's going to be separated from his sister his sister's going to be upset. So he would rather die than see that happen. That's why I have the feeling that both of them are going to die, which is heartbreaking because it didn't need to happen. But him just maniacally laughing. And then she says, Tian Chen. She said his name. She finally spoke. And I love the Ling's like, oh my God. And she finally says, I want to go home. And she's crying and he's crying and it's the most heartbreaking thing in the world. And it's just like, Tian Chen looks like a kid again. And it's just so sad. It's just like these kids have had this heartbreaking past and heartbreaking present. And it's looking like they're going to have a heartbreaking future. But damn, that was like, came out of nowhere. I've been watching another series and the, a similar moment like this happened. And I'm like, I was just like, son of a bitch, I, why can't I have nice things? Y'all better pick some good series for me to watch this fall to make up for all this heartbreak because I'm not ready for more of this. And then, yeah, she got shot right in the chest. Nope. Not good. And, like, the blood coming up out of her mouth, no, that's not good. She did. And Shang's like, no! And then, oh, my God, the animation on Tian Shen's face seeing her fall, nope. Nope. And it goes back, I think it's Chan that shot her because it goes back to the idea of the hunter. Of And I think like next episode he's going to come out and say, you know, beasts can't be hunters. You're still just beasts or something like that. Like the storybook, the fairy tale. Because yeah, he lets, lo he lets go of Lou instantly and runs to his sister. And that's what I'm afraid of. I feel like him running to the sister, he's going to go to grab her and he's going to get shot too. Is what I think is going to happen. And then it's going to be like, He's, and then that's when I feel like, I feel like if it's Chan, he's going to shoot Tian Chen. He's going to kill both of them. And then he's going to threaten Lu and be like, Chang, if you don't go back and change the past, I'm going to kill your friend and your pseudo sister Ling. Right? I feel like that's going to happen. Whether or not that ends up coming to fruition, I don't know. It's either Chan that has the gun or it's, or it's uh, Liu Zhao. But I feel like Lu Zhao is going to come next episode and be present, but I don't know how and to what capacity, but. So yeah, it, what a fun episode. What a fun, 
frolicky, happy episode of Link Click. Terrifying, but how about that? So yeah, we have one more episode at least. Um, this may be the last episode next week. It would be, it would make sense if next week was the last episode of the season. Makes sense. But I honestly think between this episode and episode nine, I think episode 11, and episode nine are my favorite of the season so far. Just so good. So freaking good. So yeah. <laughs> so I hope you all enjoyed this reaction discussion. I'm curious to know your thoughts down below, but I will be back next week um, with the final, possibly, episode of season two of Link Click. Bye.